Now let's take a look at how to use one of my favorite features of Camera Raw 4. That's the new tone curve that they've added in here that really allows you to tweak the overall tonality of your image to degrees that you've never been able to do before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to open up this little preview window over here on the left again. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the horse.dng file here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this window back up again. And just to give it that full screen preview again. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the tone curve from these little option buttons that you have at the top of the camera raw interface here. And inside this tone curve, you have the ability to utilize the curve the much the same way that you would inside of Photoshop CS3, except for the fact that you have the ability to control the curve with these little sliders down here as well. So you really don't have to understand necessarily how these curves work to make this little tone curve interface work. So for instance, if you want to increase the area of the highlights, just simply drag your slider to the right, and you'll notice that you start to open up the highlights, and you also edit the curve at the same time. So you're getting that live updated preview of the curve right up there in the top right hand corner. And you're also getting this live preview of exactly what you're doing to the image here on the left. So it's a very visual way of correcting your images as well as a live preview of your histogram, which is also very useful to learn exactly where the different colors are distributed and your highlights and shadows are distributed and so forth. So just pay attention to this. And this is a great way to edit your photograph simply by clicking and dragging sliders around. For instance, if I want to increase the lighter areas a little bit here in this photograph too, I could simply increase the lights by dragging over to the right. And then the same holds true for the shadows and the darks as well. If I want to increase the dark areas, which essentially I'm just increasing the contrast between the two. So I'm increasing the darks and then I increase the shadows as well. Now, when you drag these sliders, they work in an opposite manner of the highlights. What I mean by that is the fact that when you drag the highlight slider to the right, you're actually increasing the highlight values. When you drag the darks or the shadows to the right, you're actually decreasing the shadows. You can see that by the color of these sliders here. See, it goes black to white. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking the shadows. Here is the default setting for the shadows. This is where the shadows were when you first opened up this image. And if you take this slider and start dragging it to the right, you're going to take those shadows and start making them more neutral gray or even white if you drag it all the way to the right. For instance, let's go ahead and show you this extreme version here. Let's say I drag it all the way to the right. See how I've totally muted out all those shadow areas there? That's because this works in a converse way as compared to the highlight values. So if I wanted to darken up these shadow areas, I can take this and I'll drag it to the left. So my suggestion is whatever you do, if you want to create that nice S curve up here in the curve like that's what everybody's taught to do you're always taught to make that s curve to create that perfect contrast in your photographs so what i suggest you do is go ahead and set your highlights first for instance let's go ahead and set these to equal values here plus 32 then go ahead and set your darks and shadows value to the exact opposite of that so i'll say negative 32 for that and negative 32 for the bottom value as well and so you see here we get that increased contrast all the way across this image. We also get that nice S curve right up there inside the curve preview window as well. Now you might notice when you create this S curve that it's a little too intense. As a matter of fact here we're losing some shadow details in certain areas here. So what you can do then is just take these values and subtract from them a little bit. So I'm going to take these highlight values and I'll change them maybe to 25. And I'm just going to cycle through these by hitting the tab key on my keyboard. So we'll change those to 25, and we'll change these to negative 25. And you see there, I've brought back a lot of those deep shadow areas that I lost before when I increased that contrast. And I also maintained a lot more of those highlighted areas by decreasing the highlight values as well. So this is just another way that they're giving you a lot more control over your digital images and also some very visual feedback in the form of this nice tone curve and this amazing preview window over here on the left that's really going to allow you to cycle through these images and add this nice S curve of contrast and maintain the visibility of exactly what you're doing at all times. So this again is how to utilize this great new tone curve here inside of Camera Raw 4.